What's going on everybody? It's Greg Peters with the Car Passion Channel here and today I'll be attempting to lap in the new intake valves on my cylinder head. I'll also discuss why I've chosen to try to do this myself. What does lapping even mean? And then I'll be measuring how well the valves are sealing using the tool that I built in a previous video. And this is the last step I need to go through before I can send my cylinder head to the machine shop and I can put this engine back together and start making some horsepower. So what do you say we jump into it? So why am I attempting such a thing myself? It's something that I've always left up to the machine shop and that I've never felt confident in attempting. Well, it's pretty much to do with that tool that I built. Now I finally have a method that I'm pretty confident in telling me if the valves have a good enough seat or you know, good enough seal or if there might be a problem. Now at the end of this, if I'm not really that confident with the results, I can always tell the machine shop to handle this for me. That's why I'm doing this first and then sending it to the machine shop to get just cleaned and shaved. Let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you the procedure that I'm gonna do. As most of you watching this video already know, fuel and air come through your valves and then the valves close and they have to seal in an incredible amount of pressure during the combustion event. And the better those valves seal, the more of that combustion energy is used into propelling your car forwards, AKA making horsepower. So in today's video, I'll be doing a process called lapping the valves. And that's basically a fancy way of saying, taking the two surfaces, that of the valve and the valve seat and making them friends basically. It's the same idea as bedding in new brake pads or breaking in a new clutch, except it's a little different because in both of those cases, you have a friction material and a metal surface, where in the case of the head, both surfaces are metal. So we're going to add a little something called valve grinding compound to help those two surfaces become friends. Now in my last video, I built a tool that will help me actually measure how much air is leaking through the valves, and it'll help me tell if the lapping process is actually making a difference or not. If you haven't seen that video, I'll I'll link that down below so you can check it out. But the idea of this machine is it pulls a vacuum on the port and the more vacuum the machine is able to pull, the better the valves are sealing. Now you do need to have your valve stem seals in place during this process. Otherwise a bunch of air is just gonna leak down the valve guide. So the two measurements I'm gonna take here are the peak vacuum and then how long it takes for the vacuum to subside. And I'm just gonna measure from 20 inches of mercury down to five inches of mercury because I know that's a range all of the ports will cover and it's just something that's easy to measure. The more air that can leak through the valves, the faster the vacuum will subside, and we can use that as a measurement as to how well the valves are sealing. So my goal today is to have the vacuum pulled in each port to read a higher maximum value and take longer to subside than before I lap the valves. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some measurements here, and then I'll post on the screen here what the preliminary results are. All right, I've got my first set of measurements now, and I really don't know what I'm looking for yet, so this is really just a baseline and the exhaust valves should be relatively healthy, but on exhaust port number two, it does have a lower peak value and the vacuum is dropping much faster than the other ports. Exhaust ports three and four being the healthiest, pulling 28 inches of mercury, while exhaust port number two is only pulling 26 inches and the vacuum subsiding over twice as fast. So I have my baseline now, let's do some lapping and see if there are improvements to be made. All right, so what are we gonna need to complete this job? First, let's check out the valve grinding compound. Now link down below the exact stuff I'm using here and the stuff is basically like liquid sandpaper it's a paste and you can see it's got little metal bits in it that is what's gonna help smooth out the surface of the valve and the seat and create a better seal I use a set of these suction cup drumstick looking things I did do each valve by hand yes it is possible to do them with the drill but there are many arguments to do them by hand and I'll let you do some research on that if you're confused about it there are a metric ton of videos on YouTube about valve lapping and everybody's different technique for you to go out and do plenty of research aside from my video. Please remember that I am not a professional and I'm actually doing this for the first time today. What's up everybody? It's your favorite HP Academy fanboy here. Now listen, if you've made it this far into a valve lapping video, I know for a fact that you love engines and so do I, which is why I'm currently taking some of HPA's online engine building courses. People ask me all the time, Craig, 
How do you know so much about cars? And honestly, I don't think I'm any sort of expert or professional. I just have a passion for it, but I get my information through just constantly doing research and having the drive to learn more. And with HP Academy's online courses, you can do the same. They have a plethora of densely packed informational videos and courses that can help you further your car modding career. And lucky for you, I have some links down in the description that can help you save money on your first purchase from HPA. And if you do decide to buy any of their courses, then it does help out the Car Passion channel as well. Everybody wins. So anyways, back to the video. So the basic concept here is to smear some of the grinding compound onto the valve and then drop the valve into its port. Now before I go any further, please keep in mind you do not want to get any of this compound on the valve stem, in the valve guide, or anywhere except for the sealing surfaces. If you get any of this metal powder where it's not supposed to be or this metal paste, it's going to cause problems. And this stuff is messy, so you have to be extremely careful to keep it where you want it. And if you get any of the paste on the back side of the valve, the suction cup is not going to want to stick so keep it dry and clean and throw some oil on the valve stem so you're avoiding metal to metal contact between the stem and the valve guide during the lapping process now we're going to drop that suction cup drumstick right onto the valve and the idea here is you're just going to use your palms you're going to give it a back and forth twisting motion apply some pressure you're going to hear some grinding noise and that's pretty much it now you can see i'm using a technique here where i'm lifting the valve out of the port and putting it back down and what that's doing is reintroducing more compound in between the seating surface so I can continue lapping. As you lap, it does push some of the compound out, so you have to do this periodically. And I'm just gonna lap these two valves pretty lightly and then give this port another test to see if I've made any improvement. It is possible to lap the valves too much and then what happens is you can make the seating surface wider, which spreads the pressure of the valve spring over a greater surface area, so you can lose some sealing power that way. Now, I think you'd have to go pretty crazy on it to go that far, but my goal here is to lap the valve enough and then not go any farther than that. And you do need to completely clean the valve and the seat and the whole port and everything. Make sure there's no grinding compound in there when you retest it. If there's even a couple grains of this stuff stuck between the valve and the seat, you are not going to be able to get an accurate reading with your vacuum tester. On the left is one of the original exhaust valves that has been lapped lightly. And then on the right side, I have not done anything with that valve yet. I don't really know what I'm looking at myself here, but uh, just in case anyone's doing it at home, I always like to include as many visual references as possible. But that's exactly why I built this tool to actually test the sealing ability of the valves so there's no guesswork involved and I can be confident in the condition of everything. So speaking of that, I'm going to go ahead and test this first port and see how I'm doing. When I first did my vacuum test, when I very lightly lapped the valves, like as light as I could, I did like maybe 30 seconds max per valve. The test actually came out worse. It went from 27 and 3 quarters, almost 28 inches of vacuum down to just over 25 after I just I kind of lapped them really quick. But like I said, I've never done this before. I don't really know, you know, I've never really felt how much you have to do each valve, you know, based on its condition or whatever. I think I figured something out. So I kept on going with these two valves and check out the test that I just ran. So originally cylinder number three was 27 and three quarters inches of vacuum. Look at that. It's like 29, I don't know, the gauges even go that high. So I've done something, I've done something correct. I've made something better. So let me explain what I think the difference was. All right, so see how it says, note, there are four grit sizes in one application of the valve grinding compound. 220, 180, 150, and 120. Now 120 is the coarsest and 220 is the most fine. So what it says is the grit grinds down to a 220 as you're lapping the valve, as you're grinding it. So when I showed you that lifting technique that gets more of the compound in between the valve and the seat, it is introducing more of the 120 grit into the seat. But I think what I have to make sure I do is keep lapping without lifting the valve for a little while longer before I take the valve out to make sure that grit size goes all the way down to 20 and that's gonna produce the smoothest finish. And I'm gonna de demonstrate what I'm talking about in just a second here, watch this. All right, now I'm gonna take my mic and I'm gonna clip it to the cylinder head because I think it's gonna give you the best sound. Listen when I lap the valve how the sound changes first. Here it gets like a smoother and smoother sound as I go down. If I just keep going without lifting the valve, it's got that nice smooth sound. But as soon as I lift it once, put it back in, it's got that real gritty sound again. 
So when I finish this valve, the suction cup is like the biggest pain in the butt. You can hear it gets that smooth sound. Now I know that is partly to do with the compound actually pushing its way out, but it says on the instructions that the compound grinds itself down. So I think that's also partly why the sound changes and that's what's gonna get more of that polishing effect or that finishing effect on both the valve face and the seat face. So anyways, I just wanted to share that with you guys. When I saw that gauge just get pegged and the results actually improved on something I did with my own hands, I've never done before, just like a super exciting feeling. And this is just why I love cars. Okay, back to the video. All right, calm down there, Chief. Let's get back to work. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process for all the exhaust valves and then retest that side of the head. All right, so let's check out these post lapping results. This is the fun part where we actually get to see and measure the difference that we're making. There is a notable improvement on exhaust port one, two, and three, both in the peak vacuum value and how long that vacuum is taking to subside. Now on exhaust port number four, I was not able to get any improvement, but maybe those numbers are good enough, but most likely I'm gonna go back and try that port again. Now keep in mind, you are measuring the sealing ability of two valves per port when you do this test. So there is a chance that one valve is leaking more than the other one. And you can try to isolate that valve by doing a so-called wet test where you put oil on one of the valves. So you're kind of measuring one valve versus the other. And I actually had a commenter on my last video come up with a good idea and that you could create a rubber plug the same way that you made the original vacuum test plate to plug one of the ports instead of using a valve. So you could also try to measure each valve individually that way if you wanted to. Anyways, let's move on to the next step. And I gotta say, I'm pretty stoked on how everything's turning out so far. Obviously, we're getting some real results, and I think I'm actually going to have enough confidence to put this head back on the engine without getting a, quote, valve job, and I will have saved myself hundreds of dollars in the process. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Now I have to switch over to the intake side, and it's a little bit different because I'm actually replacing the intake valves, which means I'm dropping brand new valves in here, and who knows how they're going to seal or if I'll even be able to get them to seal. So let's do a little vacuum test. Oh yeah, and while I'm holding this valve, it's a perfect time to talk about what undercutting a valve means. See the part of the stem that's actually a slightly smaller diameter than the rest of the stem? So there's a twofold benefit to this in theory. Number one, it definitely does make the valve lighter and it does have the potential to increase the airflow through the port. Check this out. When I put the valve in the head, you can see that the valve stem is clearly taking up some of the volume in that port. Well, if the stem is smaller, technically more air should be able to get through it. Now, whether it's actually effective on the Miata head or not, or even how much of a difference it could make, who knows? But if it's that one last little mod that pushes the motor from 419 to 420 horsepower for the meme, I'm all in. Now, over on the intake side, the majority of port injection cylinder heads are going to have ports for the fuel injectors. The 1.6 liter Miata does not, but the 1.8 liter does. So you'll need a way to plug those ports. I just took some vacuum caps and made the seal even tighter by cutting the fingers off of a latex glove and just stuffing those things in there. No matter what you use, the seal here has to be perfect. Otherwise, you're not going to get accurate results with the vacuum tester. All right, so the info we're looking at right here is the first test with the brand new intake valves just dropped into the head, no work done to them at all. And as you can see, they seal much more poorly, even than the exhaust valves before they were lapped in. With the peak vacuum ranging from 23 to 26, and the vacuum leak down as low as 7 tenths of a second, compared to my best lapped exhaust valves, which are over three and a half seconds. So obviously there is some work to be done here. Let's see if we can make some improvements. Now I'll repeat the same exact thing with all of the intake valves, and this is very much a feel and trial and error, maybe not trial and error, but you kind of get a little bit quicker at it as you go through. The first valve I did on this head, I was probably messing with it for at least 45 minutes or an hour, just trying to see what the lapping process feels like and how much work each valve would need in order to make a better seal. And then once you get a feel after a few valves, you can go a little bit quicker, but it's still something that you do want to take your time with and don't go too far.
Alright, so the preliminary test on one of these ports is looking very promising, pulling almost 29 inches on the gauge. I'm going to clean these valves and make sure there is no debris at all so we get an accurate reading, and we'll take a look at the full test results of the lapped intake valves. And check out the readings we're getting. I'd say that's a mild improvement, looking at a pegged gauge on every port at 29.5 plus. Now keep in mind that a perfect vacuum is 29.92. This pump isn't even capable of pulling that, so I'm just going to say pegged gauge on every port we're looking good and you can see the vacuum drop down test it just looks ridiculous this is definitely going to make me go back and redo the exhaust valves to see if i can get better results but let's take a look at the side by side on intake port number four of before and after lapping just so you can see the difference on the actual gauge the left side is before lapping and you can see how much lower the peak value is reading on the gauge but watch the vacuum pump shut off which is right now and look how much slower the air is leaking through the valves after they've been lapped in. Now that gives me some confidence in my work. Right, I don't wanna drag this video out for too long here, but I wanna add a couple notes. I did go back and retry the exhaust valves and I was able to improve the results slightly. They're not quite as good as the brand new intake valves, but they came out pretty good, so I'm just gonna send it. Now, why would I go through all of this work? And it is a lot of work and it is time consuming, but there is a pretty good chance I'm actually gonna to have to do this two more times, once on the NB Miata head, which is suffering from poor leak down results, and I might have to do it on the Mad Lad head because I don't know the history or the condition of that thing. So if I end up saving myself three valve jobs from learning how to do this, that could be upwards of a thousand dollars. And to me, that's worth it. So maybe some of you out there will find that it's worth it as well. Man, I'm so stoked on what? Ah, I mean, you gotta wear the Rotor Daddy's merch anytime you're talking about like valves and pistons and stuff, right? Anyways, I'm stoked on how that turned out. I was actually able to measure the difference on each valve that I lapped. That is so cool to actually be able to see that. To be honest, I didn't really have that high of hopes being that this was the first time I ever tried this procedure. I kind of thought I was gonna have to bring it to the machine shop and be like, yeah, I tried this and failed miserably. Can you do it for me? But now all I have to do is bring it in. I'm gonna get it shaved and cleaned and I'll bring the head back here to reassemble it. And the car is pretty much ready to go back together at that point. And I haven't driven that thing in months. So I'm pretty, st I'm pretty stiked. Is that even a word? I'm pretty stoked on that. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you learned something today. Subscribe if you are new. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.